With the models primed, it's time to break out the paints and get to work. Coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If you're looking for tips and advice on how to transform your plastic models into something that you'd see on the rails today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. So what is your favorite style when it comes to painting undecorated models? Is there any particular technique that you like to lean to? Please let me know in the comments section down below. In the previous video, I talked about providing a good base for painting. If you haven't already seen the video on primers, I would suggest you please pause this video and go and watch it. Primers are especially important in providing an undercoat as a way of giving parts that are made from different materials a unified coat that future coats of paint will stick to equally well. Since these Husky Stack Well cars are going to be painted yellow, I started with a white coat of primer, followed by a form of pre-shading using Tamiya Hull Red, and then using black primer to paint the walkways. Hopefully the reasons for this become obvious later in this video. With the pre-shading already done, I wanted to spend a little bit more time describing how I go about mixing paint for airbrushing. There's a lot of different discussions out there on what it is that you need in order to get the right consistency of paint. Unfortunately, these generate a lot more heat than light. So I'm going to share with you my technique and why I do it the way that I do. The truth is, there are several different ways of getting at this, but this is a technique that works for me. You may want to try and experiment on your own, but use this as a starting point. If you're going to be airbrushing, it's worthwhile to go to the dollar store and pick up a small pack of plastic medicine cups. I do this because I prefer to mix my paint outside the airbrush. I know that some artists prefer to do the mixing right in the cup, but this way I can get the consistency right before I pour it in. Regardless of what paint or thinner I'm using, I tend not to work with a fixed ratio, but rather aim for a specific consistency. While I usually start with a 50-50 mix of paint to thinner, paints are not universally consistent when they come out of the jar. Even the same jar of paint can thicken up over time, which means the paint to thinner ratio is going to change with it. So my goal for airbrush paint is to have it at the consistency of 2% milk. When you swish it around in the cup, it should just stick to the sides and then slide back down into the mix, leaving a translucent film along the side of the cup. If it's opaque, it's too thick and needs more thinner. If it doesn't leave a film, then it's too thin and needs more paint. It's also important to know what thinner to use when mixing paint. Most of the acrylic paints that I use thin very well with 91% denatured alcohol or Tamiya's X20A thinner. It's roughly the same thing. Now the exception to this is Vallejo model color. I learned the hard way that it does not thin well with alcohol at all. In fact, it chemically reacts with, it, with something in the alcohol and it turns it into an airbrush clogging goo. Trust me on this. In the case of these Husky Wellstack cars, I decided to try a new acrylic lacquer paint from AK Interactive. It's from their Real Color line. Now I prefer not to use lacquers because I don't have a spray booth yet, but in this case I wanted to try these paints out, so I did use this with some precautions put in place. Both these paints, plus the Atomia acrylics, do thin better with lacquer thinner. The real color yellow that I use it does spray very smoothly, and I do recommend them, but you really do need a spray booth if you're going to be doing it with lacquer thinners. Now when airbrushing on a model, it's always a good idea to do a test spray before applying it directly to your model. You want to make sure that you get the consistency right. If the paint hits the model and begins to pool up or creates this spidering effect, then the paint is too thin or you're too close to the model, probably a little bit of both. If it spatters, then the paint is probably too thick. Also test to see how close and how far away you can get from the subject so that you can spray in a nice even coat. Now you can also experiment with changing air pressure as well. I usually keep my compressor to 1 to 1.5 millibars. That works out to about 14 to 20 psi. Once you've kind of experimented with that, you can adjust things accordingly. When airbrushing, especially with acrylics, don't try to cover one area all at once, but rather fan and feather the airbrush over an area first to build up a thin layer, then come back and build it up. Lacquers allow for denser coverage quicker, but it's still a good idea to start with thin layers of paint and then build it up. Usually when applying these first layers, there's not a real need to mask anything. With these Husky Well Stacks, I slowly build up the layers until I'm happy with the coverage. You may also notice that I tend to remove the nozzle cap when I airbrush. This is just a personal habit and not required. 
It's very helpful in doing some precision work because you're not getting air currents around the nozzle cap that can widen the spray field. The drawback is that I have to be very careful in handling the brush because even a light bump against the tip will ruin the needle. Now when you've gotten to this point, congratulations, you've just done the basics of applying paint to a model through an airbrush. However, if you want to go a little deeper and learn some techniques not only with the airbrush but also with hand brushing, then stick around to the end of the video because you're going to find these next parts interesting. Now that we've covered the basics of how to apply paint with an airbrush, I'm going to move into showing how the airbrush and some other hand brush techniques can be brought together to further enhance the look of your models. As a full disclaimer, this is a style choice and not the essentials of painting. Military models have experimented with different styles on not just how to paint and weather models, but also how to draw a viewer in to look at and consider all the work that you put in on your model. One of these styles is called color modulation. It uses tonal variations to add interest and to draw attention to certain parts of the model that the artist wants to make sure that people pay attention to. Now even if you're not interested in this style of painting, the different techniques that are used show you some basics in terms of using brushes with acrylics and oils. So stick around, you'll find this interesting. With these Husky well stacked cars, I had started this process in the last video with some tonal pre-shading using Tamiya Hull Red to add some gradients to the model before I added the main base color. After the yellow had dried, now was the time to add in the first step of adding in the variation. Using some thin cardboard, I cut out some angle masks, and for the paint I used Tamiya XF2 Flat White mixed in with the real color yellow, still thin with lacquer thinner. I then carefully sprayed the upper edges of the cars using the edge of the cardboard to mask and cover some of the parts to allow for different tones either along panel lines or along edges of the model. The idea is to use the airbrush to feather some variation in tone and create the illusion of light from above the model, leaving the lower parts darker but still a similar color. The next step was then to hand brush acrylic paint in a much lighter tone than the base yellow to pick out certain parts of the model. I always mix and thin acrylic paints in a palette rather than using them straight out of the bottle. This allows you far better control and consistency. My usual guideline is to add enough water by wetting an old paintbrush and adding it to the paint. Once you get it to the consistency where if you draw the brush through the paint and you can see the line close in behind the brush, you're good to go. Apply the paint using the tip of the brush and always pull the brush towards yourself. It keeps the tip to a fine point when applying it. For this, I apply the paint to gusset plates, brake wheels, small tanks and other details that I want to stand out from the main surface of the model. This will help draw the eye of the observer to these detailed points. It may look exaggerated, but it will be much more muted once the weathering is applied. After using the acrylics to exaggerate detail points, it's time to use oil paints to further enhance the gradients that we put down in the airbrushing step. This is also a way to create gradients if you don't have an airbrush. One disclaimer I need to make, while I demonstrate this with N-scale well stacks, the larger the model is, the more striking the tonal variation can be. Essentially what I'm doing here is enhancing the highlights and the shadows further. So for these well stacks, I'm using a mix of yellow and soft blending white oil paints for highlights and light rust brown to enhance the shadows. Mix the oils using odorless thinner to a consistency similar to what you see in the acrylic step. You want to keep the paint fairly thin and a little goes a long way. The one thing to remember is that this is one of the few times that you apply oils to a matte coat. Start by applying the lighter color to the upper edges of the model or where you want to enhance. If there are a lot of panel lines on the model, apply it to one edge as a way to break it up and provide more definition. Once you've applied this, come back with a flat brush dampened with a bit of thinner and smooth out the edges of the paint. Lastly, take a dry brush to blend the color to the model, creating or enhancing the gradient. With the darker color, it works exactly the same but in reverse. Focus on corners, panel line edges, or the lower parts of the model, and then blend it back into the main color of the paint. Now this last step is optional, but it is a good way to bring the colors together. Sometimes with the oil modulation, the contrast and the gradients can be what you want, but can push some of the colors a bit too much into grayish tones. To pull it together, you can airbrush a bit of clear paint. In this case, I'm using Tamiya Clear Yellow. This also has the benefit of providing a gloss coat to the model, making it ready for when I handle the decals in the next video.
While I'm not ready to put the walkways on the models just yet, I wanted to at least touch on what I'm doing with them. As I mentioned earlier, I primed the walkways black. For doing any sort of work on metallics, regardless of how you apply them, this is best done over a black surface. For the walkways, as they're small, I wanted to demonstrate how a simple dry brushing technique can yield a realistic results very quickly. The basic technique of dry brushing is to take an older brush, dip it into full strength paint, and then wipe most of it out on a paper towel, and then brush over the surface of the model lightly. This works with acrylics or oils equally well. The former dries faster, and the latter you can come back and soften the effect. In this case, I'm using a type of paint that is dedicated for dry brushing. In fact, Games Workshop puts out an entire line of dry brush specific compounds that makes it easier. The dry brush paint that I'm using here is called Necron Compound. It is specifically a silver metallic color. As you can see, when I dry brush it over black walkways, they begin to look more like a realistic aluminum color. While I will be weathering these further, this shows how easy and fast dry brushing can work. So now the model is ready for the next step. Decals, or as most of you pronounce it, decals. As these cars have a lot of them packed into a small space, this can be a great way to demonstrate not only on how to apply decals, but how to layer them on top of each other, as I have to do with these particular ones. So the next video is the secret of applying water slide transfers. Now while color modulation may not suit everyone, it is a great way to see the different techniques that one can use when painting your models. The individual techniques can be applied to virtually any model, particularly when it comes to mixing and applying both acrylic, oil, and airbrush paint. We can use these and then build on them in future projects when we use more than one color of paint or we have to do something a little bit more complex. We've got the basics down, now we can move on. So I hope you found this useful and if you're looking for more tips and advice on how to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects then please hit subscribe that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. Also if you haven't done so already Please check out the other videos on this channel, but also in the description down below, there's a number of links that you might find useful. Check there for the links to my Facebook page and my Twitter account for daily weathering tips, as well as my brand new Instagram feed. So thanks for watching. Good luck, and may you keep on track.